Thank you for watching the documentary The Apollo, and thank you for now joining us for a talk with producer Lisa Cortez, Apollo Theater executive producer Camila Forbes, and filmmaker Anne Jeanette. Um, and uh, this program is being presented by the documentary program at Spelman College in association with Third World Newsreel, the AUC Camera Collective, the Atlanta Documentary Society, and the Documentary Forum at CCNY. Um, I'm JT Takagi of Third World Newsreel, a progressive media center that prioritizes media buying about people of color, and we're thrilled to be part of this event. I want first, though, to uh, have you join me in acknowledging that in New York, we are on the unceded territory of the Lenny Lenape, Canarsie, Shinnecock, and Muncie peoples. In Georgia, where some of you are, the territory is that of the Georgia tribe of Eastern Cherokee and the Lower Muscogee Creek tribe. We acknowledge and challenge the harm that continues to be inflicted upon indigenous and people of color communities here and abroad, which is why we are all part of the struggle for rights, equality, and justice. So let me tell you how this will work technically. Um, attendees at this webinar will be able to ask questions in the Q&A box at that, that's at the bottom of your screen. Your camera's disabled, and the chat only works from us to you. So your mode of communication with the panelists will be via the Q&A box, which I see is already getting questions um, and a statement that one of our attendees is resides on the land of the Tongva. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce your moderator for tonight, filmmaker, producer, and professor, Anjanette Levert. Um, and she will in turn introduce our guests and lead the questions with Lisa Cortez and Camila Forbes. So Anjanette, welcome tonight and thanks for doing this. All right, well, thank you. Um, this is really exciting. Um, let me see, I'm doing some technical things. Okay, so um, so first, let me go ahead and bring to the stage um, the people that we're gonna have, the really empowered women that we're gonna be having a conversation with. So that's producer Lisa Cortez and executive producer of the Apollo, Camila Forbes. So again, thank you for being here. Welcome empowered women. And um, I was just getting a, a text that, um, um, you know, Camila, that you were nominated for the NAACP award for, um, you know, Between the World and Me. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was just announced um, uh, a couple days ago, so yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <Great caps. laughs> awesome, yes, wonderful. Yeah. Um, that's really something, you know, we're in a totally different climate, you know, in terms of um, acknowledgement for our work and the work that we do. Of course, the NAACP has been, you know, steadfast in that, but, you know, in other arenas is, um, you know, new territory and Absolutely. we like it. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, so let me just jump into this. So what a really powerful film. And I would say that is, it's like, it's the slow grind, if you will. Like there's things that, you know, just hit you, you know, like a, like, you know, like a Mack truck. But for this film, for me, it was, you know, it was a slow build. And what I really saw is how layered it was because I saw the film in um, 2019 and, and then rewatched it this time, you know, for, for this occasion. And then really saw so many other things that I was like, what, were, what was I doing when I watched it the first time? I didn't see hardly any of this, you know? And so, um, you know, because I had the thought of, I just wanted to hear, if you will, um, I hope they don't shudder when I say this, but the classic performers mm -hmm. talk about their experiences. I was really all into that. And then to have these, these other lines or other storylines come in and out, um, you know, I was just like, why is that done? And on second viewing, and maybe also because of what we have gone through in 2020, mm. I'm, I'm seeing it like in whole, whole new eyes. So, um, so first, you know, this is a very basic question. And in many ways, I think, you know, we know the answer to this, but 
you know, I don't really see that many documentary films about buildings. Certainly, you know, exotic places and that sort of thing, but not a building. And I get that, you know, what you showed us is that the Apollo is way more than that, right? But, you know, in terms of making the decision to make this film and, um, and really how to lift it off the ground because there's so many films out there and so many subjects and then, you know, you got it made. You know, that's what I'm really looking at. So if you could talk about how that, you know, how this project even just got started. Oh, is that for me? Yes, you can take Ooh. it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, well, I, I will say is that, you know, this project was in the making for um, seven years almost, right, Lisa? Okay. Um, and um, and, and my, what I would say is that my first day on the job, which was in 2016, was also the first day that I met, um, who, who ended up becoming the director of the film, Roger Ross Williams, because he was, was, was brought on. And then of course, Roger and the duo, the dynamic duo, <laughs> but, um, and our amazing, um, producer, obviously, Lisa Cortez. Um, and one thing I will say is that, you know, one of the ways that made, at least on the Apollo side of things, really exciting, there had, there had been a lot of doc pieces done about the Apollo and about artists who had performed on the stages and, 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 and sort of this talking head kind of doc. Mm -hmm. uh, what Lisa uh, had articulated, and Lisa and Roger had articulated their way in, was to be to to, to really have more of a social justice film, right? Um, a film that had far more um, um, that was relevant to the times, but also told the story of a building and how important a building, but more importantly, a people were in their own political and personal revolution. Um, and that is what excited, I think, our team at the Apollo, um, mm -hmm. because they're such brilliant storytellers and it was such a unique point of view. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know if that it, it totally answered your question. I'm sure Lisa can fill in a lot more of the gaps about how it came to be, but it, it, it had been in the making for a while. Um, but I think when, when, when Lisa and Roger came on board, it, it really took off from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Camille, Camilla gave, gave me the, the best setup. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it, 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 um, it stopped and started. There was another director, but really, um, the film as we know it came together when Roger Ross Williams joined as the director. Mm -hmm. He brought a real unique lens to interrogate the story. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, yeah. it, it, we always like to talk about in the construction of the story, the different kind of layers that are in, in were involved. So it's almost like, you know, you know, the architectural drawing when you cut through and you see, you know, what is on the different floors. You know, on the ground floor, it was important to tell this, the chronological historical story. But on the second floor, it, we then looked at like, how does this intersect with seminal moments in um, our political, social, con social political context for black folks? The third is like, okay, protest music. Um, you know, how is this call and response of the art we create um, connected to what is happening in our lives, both joyous moments, but also moments of pain and pressure. And then you see this thread that starts to come together of the Apollo as a place of convening, a place of all of this expression an exploration in a variety of art forms could take place, you know, in the confines of this building on 125th Street between Adam Clayton Powell and Frederick Douglass Boulevard. Yeah, um, you guys are like totally blowing up my questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we looked over your Zoom shoulder. <laughs> um, so, so. <clears throat> piggybacking off of like both of what you all said, because when I, you know, after, you know, seeing the film again, I started seeing this tension between the past and the present, as well as, if you will, like black excellence and racism, you know, um, because there was, you know, because I have, the Apollo as a, a place of black excellence. 
And like we saw that there were other things at play, like there was like a darker, um, darker space, at least at least initially when um, or for the first, you know, what half century maybe, mm -hmm. you know, that um, that was at play. So if you could talk about, um, so I was thinking about these these two um, tensions that are happening and how these are like you know, throughout the, throughout the film and you do it with the different storylines. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for Lisa, if you could talk about how, you know, is that a part, it, was that a part of you all's thinking in terms of structuring the film? And then for Camila, if you think about, you know, like what are those tensions today? Because we also have, you know, regentrification is, is you know, like almost done in Harlem, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and yet, you know, you all are a place of, um, if you will, a touchstone that has, can, you know, has all, has always been, been there and through your declaration will be here. Right. So is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So the, um, gr great, great question. Um, the structural tension was really necessary to make this compelling narrative um, that um, you know has its highs and lows, um, and that is continuously though moving us forward, and we're toggling back and forth in time because the past is truly a prelude to this moment that we're in, and I think that what all of us are trying to do is figure out how did we get to this moment, mm -hmm. this moment that um, of our pandemic, this moment of Nazis, you know, in the Capitol. And as storytellers, you know, and specific to the Apollo, we always saw there was this performative um, space that we could explore, but we always had to connect it to outside the Apollo mm -hmm. because we bring all of that with us into our art. We bring all of that into this space of convening. And that's why there's a call and response and this conversation that is happening between artists and performers. And that is what we wanted to evoke in the structure of the film is that conversation between the past and the present. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, I definitely saw that. Um, Camila? Yeah, and just to, you know, piggyback on, on, on that question, again, sort of the tension, um, you, you know, that, that tension exists in, 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 in any marker of our history as Black people in this country. Um, you know, I, I think of, you know, and, and, and what's the remarkable, um, and, and I think what the film does well, it, it, it shows that in spite of uh, the barriers, in spite of, you know, um, racism, Jim Crow, reconstruction, right? In spite of um, systematic racism and gentrification, we still um, create a culture unmatched <laughs> that has influenced the globe, right? And I think of, and, and you know, I, when I think of also, you know, conditions in which like hip hop culture grew out of, right? Hip hop grew out of a need to be heard um, because young people did not have avenues to be heard, right? So I, I think that's always been, I think the narrative and our history and our legacy as a people. Um, and, and, and that's that's really the beauty of it, right? And when I, you know, look, diamonds, diamonds come out of moments of pressure. <laughs> and, and, and that was so beautifully told, um, I think through the narrative structure within the documentary, um, within the documentary, sort of that duality. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, so I was also thinking about um, how, um, how people were, you know, how to, how to say this, how, pe how were people, you know, the performers mm -hmm. were treated mm. And then, you know, because it, there is this reoccurring theme of like, in spite of that comes back and forth, which now, you know, as Lisa is saying, you know, this call and response, you know, is like back and forth because I'm looking and I'm like, 
whoa, there's like so many storylines here. We have between the world and me, we have, you know, the building itself is a storyline, you know, 125th street, Mm -hmm. you know, like all these things are happening. I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, I feel like there was like six storylines because Mm -hmm. you also have like the performance from the past. And then you also have like amateur night which is like, you know, this continuous line that goes through, you know, so all of those things are, are happening at the same time, um, which, you know, speaks to what you're saying is that you, you're not, you aren't able as a human being, we're not able to like disconnect them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also to tell the story of the Apollo properly, right? Um, We can't just tell the story of just the past of 1960s to 1980s. That's actually not a true narrative of of who the institution is, which is I think what excited us about this film and why we're so incredibly proud um, because it really um, did probably the, the, the most unsurmountable task. It told the story of then and now in such a succinct and, um, and I think profound way um, and and giving us real sort of heartbeat of where we are now, not only as a building, um, not only as a community in Harlem, not only and and but also as a people of then and now, right? So it also operated on several different modalities. And when I think of sort of the most successful sort of stories um, and storytelling, that operates on multiplicity of modalities, um, right? Um, It's not just sort of a singular, um, easily packaged label because we are, we are complex people and, and we are a complex institution. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny as, as um, Camilla was speaking, I thought like, we are the multiverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's we, great, we yeah, yeah. Are, are really, you know, that is a part of where our creativity comes from, our survival is the ability to navigate many worlds. Mm. Um, and, and so that was an important part of the storytelling was to give voice to these different ways that uh, the, the tendrils, so to speak, of the theater, you know, to the art, to politics, to um, ultimately, you know, how are we navigating through a space that is not structured to love and support us, but this institution has done that. Mm. Mm. That's yeah, sadly, so. Mm. I I also think um, I was thinking about um, you know your your production of you know between the world and me and how like on point that was you know even for when the film was originally you know um, released, but then like it just you know, echoed over and over again in terms of like the space that we're in right now. And um, there was that um, one sister who was, um, she was one of the um, actress, actresses and, and, you know, she, and she said, similar to what you're saying is that in spite of, mm-hmm. you know, it's really like our language of declaration, like mm. you know, th- this will be, this is happening, you know? And so I'm also thinking, so I know that, um, or I recently heard that you all have acquired another theater. And so now you all are the performing arts, um, Apollo Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Did I get that right? And then, um, so where, not where to now because, but how do you all continue to grow, expand and reach new audiences because So um, that's exactly right. So we have a, a acquired we have acquired a new space. Um, it is a, again another historic theater on 125th Street um, that will be a part of the Apollo Performing Arts Center campus. Um, inside that space would be additional office spaces and two additional theaters in the old Victoria Theater. For those of um, New Yorkers who might remember that theater, who's also which was also about a hundred years old. Um, and you know, I think you know part of where we are is how do we as an institution look at ourselves and move from this moment of reverence, but also to relevance, right? That's been, you know, and as a performing arts center and culture 
bearers, culture creators, cultural instigators? That's the question we constantly have to ask ourselves. And, and so a big part of that is being answered with these two new spaces, which really allow us to delve deeper into new work creation, um, new work instigation, multidisciplinary works that at, at many times, you know, a larger 150 seat or 1500 seat theater um, can maybe not allow for that kind of like a you know creative explosion to really happen or workshop. Um, so we're very excited by that um, by that notion, and it really allows us to kind of even move into the space around really redefining and recreating a 21st century canon of Black culture and Black American works. Yeah. Um, so, Lisa, um, there has been a question that has come in um, from Sierra Franklin one of my students at um, Spelman College, a documentary film major, so very excited. And so she asks, you know, what did you learn about the Apollo Theater through working on the film that didn't make the final cut? What is on the cutting room floor? I mean, not, <laughs> we don't have film anymore, but like, what is, what is on the hard drive that didn't make it? Well, I'd actually like to flip the, the question and talk about what I wish we could have shared more. Okay. Um, you know, I think one of the unique um, aspects of the film was Camilla and her team allowing us to document her realization of Between the World and Me and, um, and, and how, and, you know, we were there from, you know, from script, from books to script <laughs> to stage. Um, and we actually filmed a lot more of that process, which um, is a masterclass, you know, in creating this phenomenal work. Um, and um, we would just kind of sit in the corner and film, 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 and, you know, would it, it see how actors got into character and understood how to take the words of, of Mr. Coates and, and sh share it with their audience and, um, and then, you know, lead to the, to the performance itself. Um, you know, Zoom calls that Camila had um, as she was prepping it with some other collaborators. And, you know, it, it, and so that is what I wish that we were able to, to show more of the incredible journey of the realization of the text and uh, the, the craftswomanship that went into to it. No, death, 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 bowed down. I was, you know, I was taking notes when you were talking to the actors. I knew we were in trouble. I was like, okay, she's a real deal. Once you put up the, um, the paper on the wall, I was like, oh no, now we're gonna have to like, mapping it all out, you know, on the wall, study this, take a picture. <laughs> and, um, but also, you know, but, and, and I'm, I'm joking, but no, very, quite very serious. And then the other thing is, you know, also hearing your notes to the actors and helping them to like, you know, um, understand, um, you know, uh, talk, talking through, you know, the film and then the different act and then, you know, how they should be thinking about it. And then to like, see that magic where they were like, got it and then gave it back to you. And you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm good, that's good. So, um, so there are several things in the chat that say, we wanna see the masterclass. So I think that that's another film. You can just roll that one right on out. Lisa's gonna <laughs> direct that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, let me see, wait. Looks like somebody has, oh, give me a sec, let me see. So there is a question asking what, I, I feel like we know this, but maybe you could elaborate more on the relationship between the Schiffmans sure. uh, to, and, and the musicians, yeah. Um, I mean, I think of what we know, I think was so beautifully, or so I think accurately told by, um, you know, in the film, um, 
And, you know, is that, you know, they were, they were theater owners and promoters um, who had ongoing relationships with individual musicians, um, you know, um, uh, because they came through the theater frequently. Um, I know, I know that I know, and Lisa could probably share more because she had the fun task of um, sitting in the long interview uh, with Bobby Schiffman, which I'm sure a lot of it did not make um, the cut. One, one other question also asked about the notes, the published notes from the Schiffmans. Those uh, reside in the um, uh, Library of Congress um, and, and the Smithsonian as part of the Schiffman collection, um, Apollo Theater collection, they're on loan there. So they are, they are technically published. And in Ain't Nothing But the Real Thing, which is a book, a coffee, um, um, a book that was published by the Smithsonian on the Apollo um, as a part of our 75th anniversary, there are additional um, notes that are there. But I'm sure Lisa could share some more stories. Well, from that. you know, I think what's interesting about Mr. Schiffman um, is there was a moment where we got a note saying like, oh, you need to cut that, that line he says about, you know, the, when people got their welfare check and putting up big shows. Um, and our director, Roger, was like, no, first of all, that's what he said. Um, and it speaks to the complicated relationship. I think that, you know, um, whether he was aware or not, that existed between, you know, white theater owners catering to a Black community with Black artists. And it was important for us to share both his love and uh, for the theater. Um, the tragic, you feel the, the, almost this loss when he's like, we had to close it down, you know. You, you see the money going down, the attendance going down, but you know, he also was about the business. It wasn't, you know, I think he's an interesting character because he is uh, pulled by art and by commerce mm -hmm. and um, provides a unique lens of looking at the theater's history from what his father's vision was, what he was able to do, and ultimately what could not be sustained. Yeah. Um, yes, that was definitely something that I I picked up and I was like, wait, did he just say that? And I was like, you know what? But that's that's his truth. And then and again, this goes back to the push pull, you know, this tension, because he also, you know, was, you know, bucked against his dad and said, you know what, we can get the Eartha Kitts and the Harry Belafonte's and like, let me like write a note and see you know, let me see what I can do. And then he was able to do that. And then on the on the flip side, you know, he made that comment, of, you know, which is, you know, tr truthful, you know, to his experience and what he and what they were about. So, so again, I, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, so many layers, so many layers, so many layers. And, and it's just like, you know, Camila, you were saying, you know, is complicated is like wow um so um so let me see oh some more questions have come in let's see oh in the film ralph cooper says well you know there's a white hollywood and a black hollywood so based on your experience in both what lesson do you want young filmmakers to take away from the film about the two Hollywoods? I think we just need to lean into our black truth. That's where our art is coming from. Um, that's where we shine the brightest. And um, there is still a great uh, divide. Um, in terms of black executive power. Um, but as a creative, I know that our black truth lights the way. Mm. Um, it gives us full permission to tell all of our stories. And that's what we have to be committed to. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, um, you know, for the theater, you know, how, how does that, you know, any, any comments from you? 
I, I, you know what, I'm going to steal some of Lisa's words and lean into our black, black truths, right? Um, and black spaces, you know, there's, there is something that we cannot um, take for granted is art, culture, people being nurtured in spaces that are catered to and built for them, right? So there's something very powerful, I, you know, about black cultural spaces. We talk, I talk about this, I feel very strongly about this, obviously, because we're a black cultural arts institution. But as an artist, building work in a space in which I don't have to explain my identity, and which now this allows, or even surface identity, now I'm even allowed or challenged to even go further, to be pushed even further and even more into the, the skinny branches, if you will, um, mm -hmm. which is ultimately where good art and where truths are truly uncovered. Um, it's a powerful place um, to be. So, you know, I, I think leaning into those spaces, it's, it's, it's a travesty um, that our Black cultural arts institutions are not supported at the same level um, as, as PWIs um, in, in our country. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a completely an inequity um, in, that, in that regard um, because they are so crucial to the development of Black culture. Um, and, and so I, I think it's important that the artists make sure that they support and advocate for these institutions institutions, as well as the audiences, um, you know, as, as well as philanthropy as well, right? So it, it's, it's, it's extremely important leaning into those spaces. Yes. They're vital to our future. Absolutely. Uh, and our current sanity, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, hold on. Let me read. Okay, well, I have, I have a question piggybacking off of what you were just talking about in terms of like, how can we create a generation and then have it continue of Black people supporting cultural, you know, institutions? We are so great with the church yeah. and we don't do supposedly you know, other other things and how can we start to create a culture that actually gives back to cultural institutions? Yeah, I think it's about constantly banging the drum about speaking about our value of cultural institutions, right? Um, church does that, right? We understand what we, it's a very clear, it's a very clear cut around what I'm getting, um, what I give and what I get. And quite frankly, um, culture does the same thing. It, it allows us to understand different pieces and parts of our humanity um, in ways that you know the intellect cannot. Um, there's moments that a, a song, a moment, a tune, um, a note, a line from a play can elevate us in a vastly different way um, th than than than, uh, than let's say sitting down and, and reading a book or reading an article. Um, so it, it's it's vital to our humanity. So it's important, I think, that we consistently advocate. Um, we um, 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 you know, have have our correct PR going <laughs> about the value of cultural institutions. Continue to bang that drum, um, because quite frankly, we on a philanthropic scale, uh, as, as on a philanthropic scale, black people actually give far more in, in, in equity than our counterparts. Yeah. Um, it's just where we're giving, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's how do we make sure that we are, um, you, you know, we're just, we're, we're claiming our value um, and, and, and claiming the value that culture plays in our society. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I mean, that's definitely something, you know, as, as you know, people out here trying to raise money um, for all kinds of, you know, uh, artistic pursuits, you know, mm -hmm. that's always something that you know, we would if we had the money, but then we do it in spite of. So then, you know, it's like, again, the tension. Um, so I do have, um, so there is a question. Well, how are we on time? Is everyone good on time? Because we, we are nearing our time. Yeah, I think we have time for one last question. Okay. All right. Okay, people, let me choose. Okay, so there was a, a, a question that I, um, I think the, the, the one that we're gonna end on is dun, 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 advice. 
which is, um, so what should aspiring, you know, um, filmmakers, directors, um, you know, theater directors should be think about in terms of documenting black history, life and culture, where to begin? That's a kind of a big one, but that is the question. What I would say, well, yeah, go ahead, Lisa, you got it. <laughs> no, you go, you go first. <laughs> okay, um, um, what I would say is, um, you know, I think it's begin wherever you are. Um, I, I love this hashtag, Black History is Black Future. So, you know, the thing is, is that you as an artist are our future and also will become our history. So in regards to documenting, you actually have the tools. Sometimes we don't, we always want to wait until I take that class or I get that camera or I get this equipment before I actually start to make my art. Um, but quite frankly, I, I, you know, the tools are right at your fingertips. Um, look around at the resources that you have right around you. You don't have to be looking and waiting for something magical or a job or equipment or money to drop in your lap. You, you may have the resources sitting right next to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, to, to piggyback on, you know, what Camilla just said is, is community. You know, we don't make this work in a bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and so creating a community, um, you know, it's interesting because I produced um, the Apollo, Roger Russ Williams directed. My current film that I'm directing, Roger is producing. And that speaks to the power of our creative community and how we lift up, you know, and encourage the dreams that we have for one another. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think that says so much about like, yes, take the classes, watch the films, listen to the commentary, but, but build your community um, and, um, and always be a student uh, in the world, you know, observing how things go down and, and questioning mm -hmm. when they don't go down the right way. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes, and, I, and, and by doing that, you start to connect the dots that, that don't necessarily come together, but you're like, wait a minute here, you know? And, and I think that, you know, uh, the best work, the best artists do that for us, they're quite observant of the world. And empowered, beautiful women, thank you so much. We have come to the end, that was so fast. Thank you. Um, thank you. Goodness. Yes, yes, so again, you know, producer Lisa Cortez and executive director of Apollo, um, Camila Forbes, thank you so very much. Wonderful work and, um, you know, We'll be following you. So everybody, please follow um, the, you know, all the different entities that are here um, because the work um, is still happening in spite of. That's it.